What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver, Colorado on this um, pretty chilly mid-October day. And today I wanted to clone a porcini. So this is a Boletus edulis. And um, these mushrooms grow mycorrhizal with hemlock trees and other evergreens. Um, so someone in a previous video had asked about how the chanterelles were doing. Um, they were interested in getting some liquid cultures on our Etsy page. And right now I have uh, the golden chanterelles that I found earlier in the season. Um, those were actually from Oregon. So we work with a certified forager from the West Coast and they had um, given us a, you know, some chanterelles to try out and I cloned those. And those are growing out on MEA agar right now and I'm going to transfer them into a liquid culture. Um, one of the reasons that I didn't have that on our Etsy is because it's a mycorrhizal species, which means that it requires um a host tree to help the mycelium grow and proliferate and then fruit so the tree will gather some of the nutrients with sunlight that doesn't make it to the soil and then it will exude those nutrients um, and then the mycelium which are at the base of the tree will absorb those nutrients as well as breaking down, you know, leaf litter and other um, plant debris that falls to the forest floor. So, um, bowl eats are the same way. These are one of my favorite mushrooms. They have a really meaty, um, like a sweeter flavor to them, and they're just so delicious. Um, so, I'm gonna try to clone them. One of my lifelong goals was to. Um, you know, crack the code with mycorrhizal mushrooms. And I'm starting, you know, some morale patches because those are almost, you know, a hybrid, in my opinion, between a mycorrhizal species and a sap probe. The more I'm working with them, they seem to be more um, saprophytic in nature, but just really delicate mycelium that requires like very precise temperature changes and environmental factors. Um, there's a gentleman in Iowa who's growing morels at a, a um, commercial level, like cultivating them outside. So that was really inspirational, which is why I made that previous video where I planted the morel patch. And I've been, you know, working on that for a couple years, just trying to figure out how to get morels to fruit. So I'm gonna go through and clone this uh, porcini or Boletus edulis mushroom down in the lab. I'm gonna put it on agar, and then um, over this winter, I'm gonna be releasing some mycorrhizal species, um, a couple of those morel mushrooms that I have, and uh, the chanterelles, and hopefully these porcini. All right. Okay, guys, so I've got our porcini, or Boletus edulis, in the flow hood here, and I'm going to be cloning onto uh, MEA plate, malt extract agar. So the key thing to cloning a wild mushroom or any mushroom for that matter is that you don't want to introduce any contamination from the outside of the mushroom. So the best way to do this is to break it apart very carefully and look at that beautiful interior. Um, we've got some really nice fresh tissue there and I'm gonna be um, trying to take my clone probably from the m middle of that stem where there's gonna be the least amount of contaminants. All right, so I've got a fresh blade here, uh, number 11. I really like using the number 11s to clone because they have a really nice um, point on them, which you'll see in a second here. So you can see how nice and precise that cut's gonna be. So I'm gonna choose this region here. Um, and basically, you just wanna take a piece of this mycelium. And then 
transfer it onto this petri dish and there we go we've got a cloned porcini mushroom so I'm gonna use a few more plates just to give it a better chance of um, good growth It's really spongy mycelium, which is why some of those pieces kind of flew off the scalpel blade. Alright, so there you have it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on clo cloning a porcini mushroom. I'm going to eat the rest of that. It's so good, um, especially with some spaghetti or steak. We've been having a few porcinis. They're not super abundant this year, so um, it's more of a delicacy. But I'll keep everyone posted on how these are um, growing out and hopefully keeping our fingers crossed we get some clean mycelium. And then we'll be posting those on our Etsy along with um, the Morel uh, mycelium and the chanterelle. So there'll be probably a three pack of mycorrhizal species out um, this fall. I'm working on it. I've got, you know, a bunch of liquid cultures and another shiitake that I'm going to be cloning. But um, give us a thumbs up if you enjoy our content. Subscribe if you're looking forward to more mycology videos like these comment below if you have any other ideas or things that I might have missed. Um, I really appreciate you know the support as our channel is growing. Spread the word. Um, it's been really exciting to get a really you know tight-knit community of mycologists and like-minded people and you know I'm doing all these experiments in real time so some of things don't really work out but I feel like there's still value and learning from my mistakes as well. Um, so yeah, give us a thumbs up if you haven't already and until next time guys, much love.